need some initial steps towards your project. Um, the general idea is that we're going to have next four classes or so uh, discussing uh, some of the ideas you can um, use for designing your project. There will be projects can be designed in one of the three ways. You come up with an idea that somehow utilizes the technology or technologies that we are covering in this course, broadly speaking, and even going beyond that, and that's somehow relevant to your interest or your profession, and then discuss with us and we'll help you define it uh, and make sure it is at the right level, at the right level of expectations that we have. We have a default project, so if nothing else comes, you know, suits you, then we can take that default project, for which you'll be utilizing what you learned so far, as well as one more lecture that will come on indexing techniques. So it'll be more like a uh, some form of search engine. That is what you'll be doing if you do a default project, which will have client side, server side, indexing, search, those kind of stuff. And you would have a choice of doing a project that is along the um, variety of projects going on in the analysis center in my group. So this is first among four topics that we'll be discussing. They are interesting in their own right because they do expose you to a variety of web information systems, examples, applications, as well as technologies underneath. And they are also <coughs> interesting because they expose you they, 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 they uh, present to you some ideas that you can then say, oh, I want to work in this. Uh, you then start discussing with uh, me and all the uh, lead um, researchers in those projects, and then define a project. Typically, the project will involve three students. Although some projects, uh, if, if some of you, one of you is very, very good, or uh, two of them are very good, then maybe it can be one or two person project especially if you are joining one of these existing larger projects and you do some sliver of things, a small part of things. The idea here is that if you are to uh, join one of these uh, larger projects, um, then you need a small part of something very large which you have a lot to show for, for example. You will you'll gain also a lot of uh, expert advice by the people who are doing these projects. So I'm going to talk about today the work we do on social media. And um, in the context of web information systems, we deal with creating information out of a variety of data. And the data is uh, HTML documents. The data is a database on the web. And then data is a whole variety of new forms of data, like the social data. So around 2003, um, the work you know, on social data picked up. And um, uh, Facebook, you might recall, is only five or six years old. Um, you know, so it's pretty uh, relatively new phenomenon if you think about it. Um, before that was a very well known uh, social network called MySpace. Right? So this is when people started to generate their content and this is sort of following the, what used to happen earlier with the blogs. Right? So instead of blogs, now you can, uh, uh, you can, you can uh, share the data in smaller bytes. Now, um, what we are going to, what I'm going to talk about is um, uh, something that um, uh, deals with, uh, okay, one, one interesting aspect of today's, today's presentation is particularly different. Right? In that, rather than telling you about very specific technology, uh, there will be mention of technologies, and I will talk about uh, uh, what technologies achieve. I'm also going to give you a, 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 at least a initial, an initial exposure to the business aspect of uh, this, you know, area. Right? I, I'm going to tell you why some of this work that we are doing is very important why businesses are interested in that, why users are interested in that, right? 
And that way you can make a connection between, hey, if I were to be able to uh, really know a lot about this technology, what kind of careers I might have, what kind of jobs there might be, why are, uh, why are, why are there going to be jobs and um, careers in the areas of the work that you are doing in this particular class. Okay, so I'm going to give you that feel. In that sense, I'm going to give you some introductory uh, high level view of the business landscape in this area. So there are a whole bunch of social media uh, net, uh, you know, uh, uh, sites and they do a whole variety of things. You see, for example, they do um, uh, you know, uh, market by marketing, they might do um, uh, 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 sharing basically, they might um, be a portals, they might be micro blogs, they might be um, uh, primarily uh, chatting related things. So the number of the purposes for which social media is developed are then quite a bit. The ones that you know most about are obviously Facebook kind of things, Twitter, uh, Foursquare, things of that nature are probably the best known. But that are, they are not the only ones, something to keep in mind. Now, um, oh, also uh, other very important ones and they are also growing in importance uh, are things like media centric ones like YouTube, which are increasing their social media interactivity and coordination, collaboration aspects of it, right? So they are, uh, you are creating the group of people, you are creating the stream, for example, uh, or you are creating a channel on YouTube. That is a way of engaging or uh, doing the social activities, right? More of those things are coming. Facebook would introduce those people <coughs> into their thing versus, um, you know, Google would introduce uh, you know, other social things that Facebook might be doing into their things, right? Google has so-called G+, plus, uh, Google+, plus. and Facebook is incorporating more uh, um, uh, media, it has more photographs, more video, it has now uh, more uh, advertisement aspects. That like Google has this very strong advertisement, Facebook is coming out with its own new advertisement, uh, uh, in Facebook is coming out with increasing search capabilities. So these things are kind of merging. But um, businesses in particular cannot avoid social media now. There are 1.4 billion social media users. And uh, there is 20% increase on the last year alone. That's staggering at this rate. 1.4 billion is more than any country in the world, right? More than China or India. 65% of the US based internet users are using social media network sites. 900 million plus users on Facebook, of which 500 plus million use it every day. That's a staggering number. And Google Plus signed up more than 400 million users in one year since its launch. Of which 100 million are active users, kind of doing, using it every day. Twitter has well over a billion tweets a week. Right? And that, um, there is a, uh, uh, 96% <coughs> of the companies surveyed by uh, a company says that they are uh, increased their investment in social media. So what I'm going to talk about today is of direct business and practical bank. Now, um, broadly, public became a lot more aware of social media uh, uh, because uh, social media got used in uh, citizen actions. For example, I actually got um, started with social media myself on 26th November 2008. Can somebody remember that date? That is the date on which um, the terrorists struck Mumbai. Right? And that um, uh, uh, I have spent well over half my life in the US, but I did, uh, I did grow up in India, so uh, I was glued to it. 
was glued to it both because it's, you know, there was terrorism in India, but also because it was a very, very innovative uh, application of technology in which I was somehow uh, interested. So um, somebody, a, a, a student uh, who was visiting India from Colombia started to take photograph with his mobile phone and uploaded that on Flickr. And the tweet started on India. And it was very clear uh, that, um, and, and you, you're just, you know, looking at Twitter and every second there are multiple tweets. So first you can see the rate of information, the velocity, the change, the volume, and the fact that they were breaking the story. Well before CNN, IBN or you know, many of those Indian news channels or AP or global news channels could break the news, you know, the grounds were Yes? They were saying that maybe some of the ones come down the people on the block or using social media for the news. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, and I can show you, it so happens that I have that event on Pinterest system that I will show you. Uh, and uh, <coughs> I will say a software developer who is in that area who had talked about actually uh, helicopters, uh, listening to helicopters saying this is unusual in this area. So he had tweeted that already. And then, when the news spread that uh, Osama bin Laden was killed, he said, oh my god, this was, you know, what I heard was related to this, right? And then there were things like uh, Haiti earthquake, the Japanese tsunami, all these kind of major events, uh, Chile earthquake, uh, the earthquake, although uh, the Facebook, and we don't have too much access to Chinese media, but in China there's a lot of use of social media, and again, uh, the earthquakes there were also, uh, in, in, in the social media was used a lot in their earthquake. Um, floods in Pakistan, major floods in Pakistan, so this all was political phenomena. And then uh, came uh, the Arab Spring, where again social media played a huge um, uh, role. It's not that those, uh, 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 Revolutions might not have happened, but clearly this helped a lot. Right? So people came to know about the protest through social media and hence they it was easier for them to join as an example. Um, this is interesting. Uh, this guy, Bonim, uh, uh, was a uh, high level executive uh, uh, for Google and that uh, he is an Egyptian and well, happened to be in Egypt and that uh, he created a Facebook page. and. Uh, he was asked, um, what next? And he said, well, ask, uh, uh, ask Facebook. Right? Meaning the stories break there, the news break there, right? Now, um, uh, if a, 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 um, a top level BBC official said to um, this cadre of uh, journalists that if you are not using social media, you do not belong. Right? So on one hand, I mean, there are, of course, Cases where businesses are, you know, don't want you to spend a lot of your time doing social networking or in the business time. But um, nevertheless, there is still a huge role of social media in engaging customers and brand and other things that I'll talk to you about soon. Recently, uh, this is an example. It shows that 70% of the traffic on Al Jazeera, the most important of the news channel from Middle East, came from social media family from people putting the links to this story on Al Jazeera from this uh, uh, social media. It so happens that uh, one of our students uh, is going to be working with in Qatar, uh, at Qatar Foundation, uh, and that has a strong collaboration <coughs> with Al Jazeera, we will be analyzing and understanding the issue about the uh, use of social media in variety of contexts, particularly disaster. There will be two courses we work. Uh, and there are a lot of other applications. For example, in social development, an area that I'm personally interested in, uh, here is a um, um, site called My Mocha, uh, where online learning, uh, it offers online learning tools with social uh, engagement. Solia, dialogue between students uh, from diverse background across global using it is multimedia technology. Digital democracy is this is a very interesting one, by the way. Empowering marginalized communities to use technologies to fight for their human rights. 
patients like me, um, where you can go and say, hey, uh, I've been given, uh, my mother has been given this drug, and she's having a side effect. Anybody having the same kind of stuff? And people would, you know, say, well, uh, you know, and then you can see what others are saying and learn from them. So patients like me, Trialex, uh, uh, where, where one of my uh, former students, um, uh, Karthik Gomadhan was uh, one of the uh, key developers and, and co-founder, uh, helps uh, people find clinical trial. Some people have uh, disease uh, for which there are no standard medication, no medication, but uh, the only choice they have then is to look for a clinical trial. And that uh, is what, uh, you know, to find the clinical trial that might save their life, uh, you can use this, uh, this particular site. In business, in traditional business, uh, social media play a huge role in advertisement and promotions, in public relationship, customer services, brand experience and management. Recently, uh, uh, United Airlines, um, when United Airlines and uh, Continental Airlines merged, uh, and they merged their website then, um, after uh, the launch of the integrated website, uh, they were totally paralyzed. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I was taking an interstellar trip, and I, drive, I was being driven from here to uh, Columbus, where I was flying out of. I was on the phone for 66 minutes and didn't get it. And then I had to drop the car because I reached the, um, um, uh, the uh, for the customer service. And I reached the airport, so I dropped the call. Uh, but um, if I had used uh, their social media uh, to uh, contact. And uh, soon after actually that time, Delta, for example, announced that um, uh, uh, they have, uh, the, for the customer service, you can tweet. And it is much more likely that you get major response when you tweet uh, to their customer service uh, than if you try to use phone as an example. And it is known that uh, using phone is better than standing in line if there is a major problem with their phone. Right. So see how the things are evolving. This is only in a matter of three or four years. So uh, now businesses are telling the customers that the best way to engage with us is through social media. And or customers are getting the best results when they complain about the product or social media. Right? So if you don't like some uh, service, complain on social media, you probably will likely hear from them much faster and with much better uh, results. Right? Uh, there are, uh, in particular, area of uh, business intelligence, trend spotting, forecasting, <coughs> tracking, targeting, investment. There is particular, um, you know, growth of social media companies or social media analysis companies. Business intelligence by engaging major industrial activities in social media. So, for example, um, 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 uh, a car company wants to decide whether it wants to continue uh, creation of, uh, uh, you know, continue pursuing the electric, electric vehicles. Uh, just yesterday, Toyota announced that they were going to kind of stop uh, investing in electrical vehicles and just rather, rather uh, continue invest in hybrid vehicles. But if, before coming to a decision, they may want to listen to social media and what to saying about this is, as an example. Or, that you want to get a trend. For example, um, uh, a company wants to, um, uh, 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 when you launch uh, Windows 8, you want to find out what is, how is Windows 8 being received by customers or by potential customers or by the public in different parts of the world. Where are the uh, results? Where are the you know kind of um, social media feedback positive? Where they are negative? If they are negative, negative about what feature? Many of this thing can be understood by the list of social media. Uh, collaborate for collaboration platform to monitor, measure, and engage customers using social media. Manage social media marketing communication using a single platform, and then reputation.com. Then you know you might have heard that. They can view unwanted of Google links. I don't think they are overselling themselves, but nevertheless, the point here is that uh, they could uh, employ some strategy to uh, blunt the customer criticism uh, and that affects their reputation. So, 
most of us uh, today go to do uh, some search uh, to select uh, to decide whether the product is good or not bad, or um, uh, a, a doctor is good or bad, or uh, a vendor is good or bad. And um, most of those search results are increasingly biased by the conversations on social media because the HTML documents uh, could be very outdated. Social media, uh, you know, uh, men mentions of those products, vendors, services, will be a lot more recent. Additionally, there are other things such as being able to analyze sentiment, positive, negative, people like or dislike. There are certain advantages of realizing doing that over social media. Um, there are also uh, implications of use of social media for uh, improving the productivity of the business uh, users, professional users. And that is another very important thing. Uh, and um, so there is this report here. Um, 20 to 25 percent of the, uh, they expect that social media could be used to improve the productivity by 20 to 25 percent. One of my uh, good friends, um, uh, who, uh, with whom my former students have worked, um, has a company. Um, uh, that company uh, help, uh, helps you find, for example, um, experts or people who have knowledge on the topic of, suppose I'm an employee and I'm looking for some expertise or some knowledge or some feedback or some help on a particular topic, then it will help you find that through the use of analysis of a variety of communication including email. And email is a form of social media. Uh, but uh, maybe other uh, IMs that company people use, the companies have internal IMs. They use those things, the analysis of those also help you identify where is the expertise within a large company. Uh, IBM has uh, a few hundred thousand employees who has the right expertise. Finding that is very important. And that can significantly improve productivity. Now, let us talk about, let's go to the little bit of a technological perspective, even more than technological, first kind of get an understanding of what it takes to understand social media. And then we can, uh, uh, each of them have implication of the technology that is relevant. So the first aspect of, um, so this one uh, provides a very broad range of things in one particular picture. Um, of the kind of analysis you can do and how you can understand social media conversation. So the first one is spatial temporal thematic by time, location, and theme. And let me discuss that. So uh, let us let me discuss that with an example. So this is a system. This is our system. This is what we have developed uh, um, uh, in Oasis Center. It's a pretty large system. A lot of PhDs work on this. And here, this is about election. And I would want to say, what are people saying? This is yesterday. 9:24 is yesterday. Yesterday, along the topic of election, what were people saying? So I can find out that um, in uh, the state of Louisiana, there are various things that people are talking about. You will see something interesting here. Last to file to remove Obama. Right? And you, what you will see here is uh, and most of, uh, Obama from Mississippi ballot or things of that nature. You can, you can basically, you know, uh, uh, Click on any of those things, and you can get the links. In this case, from Rhode Island, the issues are very different. If I go to, let's say, Washington State, you see, you don't see the same thing being discussed. So if you look at the, uh, consider, I, I'll give you one very uh, vivid example. On the day uh, President Obama won Nobel Peace Prize, the, uh, the tweets uh, from uh, and the conversation from Mississippi were very different than from Massachusetts and Vermont and uh, the blue states. Right? The same thing is if you go back to the um, uh, uh, if you go back to the healthcare debate, then what people were talking about, uh, and then on the public option debate, what people said from you know. Blue states were very different things than what people say from 
uh, red six. So you can understand what is what is on the mind of people from different parts of the country. So that is first of all what you see is a theme, right? That this is Mitt Romney thinks airplane windows, and this is about you know Mitt Romney talking about complaining that airplane windows won't open. Right? Uh, I hope you guys uh, heard that story. Yeah. Uh, so. Now, this is a theme, and it is people in, from Washington state are talking about that. That's location. And we are talking about this conversation on 24. If I change 24 to uh, some other time, that would be fairly different things, right? Here, people are talking about millennials like Mitt Romney student or whatever, right? So, uh, uh, the issues here vary. So this is telling you spatio temporal thematic. What are people talking about when in different locations? Right? So that is one sort of dimension, <coughs> one, one, three, uh, uh, one way we can analyze or dissect uh, this kind of social media conversation. The second one is people content network. So here, who says what, to whom, why, to what extent, and with what effect, as an example, is, you know, so this is what we were saying by gentleman last year. Network deals with social uh, structures that uh, emerges from aggregates uh, of relationship, or the ties, or how does the information flow, or how, um, uh, who listens to whom? Right? People. Who are the people behind? What are liberals saying? What are conservatives saying? What are the tea partiers saying? What issues are important to them? That brings in demographic. <coughs> what are people over 65 thinking? What are college goers thinking? You bring in people dimension and content. What they are saying. So in, in, these are interrelated in a way. So what people who are 65, that is the people part, say content. That is, you know, uh, that is the content part, right? So um, within this particular, and so when I look at, for example, people content network, and these dimensions uh, themselves interact. So I can take here people, I, here I, uh, the, um, the scenario is that of crisis, uh, understanding the crisis data, disaster and crisis, and here are uh, social content that originate from the location where the crisis is occurring. It's like say somebody right on the ground where Haiti earthquake is, uh, has happened, and somebody remotely sitting in US saying, oh, it's too bad, terribly bad, so people are hurting, what can I do? Uh, you know, go here to donate, and they're talking about remote, right? And then, so who generates the data, or what data is generated, how data is generated, why data is generated, when data is generated, you ask all those kind of questions, and try to understand the situation. Right? So you're looking at this thing from many, many different perspectives. People data, just to give you an example, uh, how do I get a uh, hold of people data? Well, through the explicit information from user profiles. There is a name, there's a picture, a video a link, demographic information, group memberships. I can get all some of this through LinkedIn. I can get some of these things from your Facebook profile. I can get some of the things from your Twitter profile. I can even try and go across the social media platforms and link the companies that would link in the re-identify you. That means they would um, uh, you know, say, oh, this is a person, his or her email is this, and by the way, here is his Twitter ID, here is the Facebook ID, here is this thing. Then you go to each of the places and you pick up the profile information, you break it all of them, and you create a composite profile of the person. That's how I can do this. There's a lot more I can get about you. Advertisers want to know this. Or implicit information from user attention metadata, like page views, your likes. <coughs> Comments, Facebook follows, retweets, replies, all this engagement that you have. That also tells me about you. 
here uh, about uh, an example. Uh, Hemant uh, is one of the PS students. And so I, I can see the variety of C. It shows you identification, there's interest things, activities, uh, the network aspect of it. Now, on different social media, different information will be there. And you'll have different ways to get it. So here are some examples of the metadata. People metadata, user identification metadata, and user interest metadata. There are many things happening. First of all, um, if you don't know, you should that there are there's a very large business of collecting user data, privacy, private data. So what you think is private is just not that private anymore. Um, uh, and uh, US's law about your own rights to your data is very lax compared to let's say European law. So uh, companies are able to collect a whole lot of information about you, store that, and not only collect but also sell. And people sell your databases, they collect this, they curate them, they make it clean and sell it, or they sell services. So I may collect this, and then uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as there's a web page, uh, that web page, uh, you know, server will call this third party service, that will give you information uh, because you know uh, that um, uh, this, uh, you're signing, let's say, uh, to your Google ID, right? So your ID is known. Now it is possible that uh, somebody is making uh, a call to this third party ad server that will tell you the keywords of interest to me that would be used to uh, buy, uh, use Google ad network buys on those keywords. And those are the tools we show you. And all these are happening just while the page is being thrown at you. Here is your activity data, age of the profile, <coughs> frequency of post, timestamp of last status, all kinds of stuff, you see? Influence data. So, so much information about you can be collected. About everything, all of us is collected. And there are other things, third party services are going there. There's a whole variety of content metadata. Date, location, author, name, uh, name entities in the content you are talking about, hey, we are always talking about BOS, you know, that's something we know in the user of content. Or that uh, uh, related uh, name entities from the knowledge sources. So, uh, for example, you always talk about uh, Democratic Party, well, we know from the knowledge source that Obama is the candidate for Democratic this year. Right? So, things of that nature. You can find out, infer increased information from, so you mentioned president uh, uh, and uh, in the election context, and I know it is President Obama. Internet content based metadata, uh, uh, that is referred to URIs, image image links. For tweets, for example, I have published date and time, location, tweet posting method, author information, if you have used SMS and I use uh, SMS gateways to collect your SMS, uh, if it is made public, then I have all this kind of information and, and so on and so forth. So here is just an uh, example of the explicit content metadata, increased content data. All these things are not going to test you on per se. So don't worry about the details of that, but just kind of get a sense of the complexity and challenges and details that, that, that are there for each of those things. Still more variety in this case SMS. In the case of network, you can find out you know, when people are talking about something together. Community size, community growth rate, largest <coughs> and, uh, strong, uh, you know, strongly connected component size, weakly connected component size, uh, you know, and maximum size, average degree of separation, so on and so forth. Type of relationships, relationship. Let me show you through a very vivid example. So in this case, I am going to look at the event of um, Occupy Wall Street. No, oh, it's still hot. I thought oh, it's still hot. I thought that they, uh, you know, this is reducing or dying of, uh, after one year anniversary. 
expected significant slowdown. up. So here is an example that is my favorite. And I can give you not more of them, but just this is the most, you know, vivid one, but more, more clear one. Here, we are realizing people who are in a network, uh, are, you know, who, who, who have formed a community talking about Occupy was to issue in the Chicago area. And I you know, and, and the whatever people who occupy, who uh, identify themselves as part of the Occupy was to community in Chicago. Okay. And so you can see that these are all the different people. Look at this. This is a people method. This gives me professions. I'll show you exactly how I get here in this case. But uh, you can see that there are a bunch of people there, right? They're not talking to each other too much. Look at this, Occupy LA. Right? You see, they're very well connected. They are organized. You see a very clear picture of people actually using social media to coordinate their activities. They engage with each other. <coughs> and then you can from you study. Oh, look at these people in the center of this thing. So for example, I'm going to click on this guy who is I find some political leading. So this is the guy. And see I this is how I knew that the closest uh, you know affinity in this context is that of politi uh, 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 politics. Right? So uh, and, 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 and you can see additional profile information that I would have analyzed and that I would know about. So this gives you a very clear picture of use of network and background information. Oh, sorry, and, 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 and people in general. People and network as well. Right? And there's a lot more. I can learn from that. I, I've given you just, just one aspect of it. This. People want to learn uh, how is message uh, spreading, who are the influential people, who is spreading rumors, uh, where did the viral marketing, where did vi something went viral, how did this start, how did this spread, all these kind of things uh, people are uh, learning, you know, studying about. Here is, uh, give you now, probably the most technical slide right now. This, the, the tweet here is, this poor Lara Logan, uh, uh, woman, sorry, this poor woman, RT at THR CBS News, released from hospital after Egypt assault and the name. Right? Now, <coughs> There is a lot more with that text that can be done. You can understand the word poor is a sentiment expression. And the expression target is targeted towards Lara Logan. Polarity of the sentiment is negative. RT, I know, it's a uh, you know, retweet. I know the handle, who the person is. CBS News. I know that it is a news agency. The name of the person is mentioned here, which it knows through the analysis this poor applies to that. That's how the target is Lara Logan. Entity type, this one is person. It is from hospital. Hospital is also an entity. I know it's an hospital. After Egypt, it is also an entity called country. And so it is a topic. Then there's a link to external URL. Not only that, I would go on to analyze the external URL and understand what the external URL says get more information about what this person is trying to convey. Right? So just a little 109 character tweet. And look at the amount of analysis that we can do. It also tells you the challenging things and the state of the art and the research and all kinds of stuff that goes on. Right? This is what is very exciting. So in the area that you know, you are in computer science, yes. Who marks this up, or how are you guys marking up that tweet? 
Yeah, I'll do it again. Probably that you guys wrote. Or yeah, the, 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 we write the software that okay. particularly does this. Right. So, um, for example, if you were to join one of those on your project, one of you know, say, two three stream, you would mm -hmm. get to learn how this is done as an example. Possible. Okay. So this has to be done automatically on the fly, often, or within you know, we have billion plus things going on. Now uh, I don't have a number of servers uh, to do that. We have a few servers that are available, a few virtual machines that are available. Uh, to do that, um, we have a little cloud of 18 nodes. We not completely used for this purpose, but some of it is used. And um, but um, uh, if I were to take this to uh, you know companies like Twitter or Google, then they have hundreds of thousands of computers and, that they can put, and we can do much bigger thing faster. Thing. It happens. In fact, I'll show you a project that came out from our collaboration with, the, uh, with IBM. Uh, very shortly, I'll show you. The exciting thing here is that you are here at a world class place where students are working with uh, the latest technology. Uh, on this particular topic that I'm to talking today, and we had a student who had gone to um, uh, our social media analysis uh, this year and with Bing search, uh, with Microsoft research, another had gone to IBM research, uh, what else? Another is actually going to Qatar. Uh, and some more. So, you know, last year we had uh, also two students who went to work, three students who went to work, like that. HP and Yahoo, and so on and so forth. Did you guys store this in XML then? Or how's that stored? Ah, um, so, uh, good question. And um, um, there's a cool lot of things here. And that is uh, not a very simple answer, but a very good question. So. If you think about it, I don't have a picture with me right now about like, the whole pipeline of the whole software that takes. So, a lot of different software components here, mm -hmm. doing each kind of analysis. At different stages, there are different set of intermediate steps and different types of storages that are used. So uh, there is a part that comes as a text, but then these are then this is called annotation. This annotation can be stored in multiple, you know, different formats. And um, one of the formats that we use is RDF. It's called Resource Description Framework Format. That is, uh, um, either you can store in a tag format in MySQL, so in tables that are stored, and or it is also stored, uh, some, of, some of them is stored in so-called RDF, which is a kind of new generation of database technologies uh, called semantic web data. And um, that is what we'll do in the next class if you have to take one. Uh, in the three class, we do a lot more of that. But there, uh, it is subject predicate object. So there, it is a richer thing. So in the relational, so if you think about uh, the storage forms and uh, uh, database uh, forms, different forms have different level of um, uh, richness. On one hand, you have unstructured data, like this text. Uh, so they don't have structure. There is a lot of richness, but the richness is something when human listen, reads that, right? There's a lot of uh, natural language is very rich, but machine doesn't understand much about it. Then comes uh, a, a form, let's say a uh, relational database form, where you have table and you have, I can uh, put attribute value as an example. <coughs> I can do more than that. So I have foreign keys and all things. But I say, oh, I can say uh, uh, entity is and if I want to just store that, I can store that. However, that is not sufficient. The next form is XML, where I have a tree form. So tree form, the basic data structure for XML is tree. That is richer than a tabular format. There, from there on, I have this triple form, the RDF form, which has subject, predicate, object. So uh, it will say that uh, Laura Logan uh, is the is being uh, the sentiment associated with Laura Logan here is poor. And then a sentiment or associated with is a relationship which I can explicitly capture. There. So it, there you are capturing three things as opposed to two things in a table. And the fundamental structure behind it is a graph structure. In graph structure, if you've done data structure class, is 
more complex, more powerful than a tree structure, which is more powerful than a list. So in that sense, you have a different variety of richnesses and we have used different uh, form of story structures for each of this. But the, answer, the issue is not that simple. You, there is no free lunch, as you know. So the more complex structure we use, uh, potentially uh, slower it could be. Potentially there is more um, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 heat on the performance. And many of these things have to be performed very fast. So there is a new alternative that has come to the market it's called no SQL. Very popular today. So there's a system like Cassandra, there are many other things. And there, um, it gives you ultimate flexibility but doesn't have structure. So you have to design programs in a very different ways compared to simulation databases, or uh, XML, or RDF databases. And there are a lot of pros scale. So when you have to scale massively, relational databases cannot scale. Certainly, RDF cannot scale today. So you have to go to no SQL. Well, there are pros and cons. So there are, you know, you have to figure out you know, which one is best. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I should, you know, I should, I wish you would ask more questions. So now, uh, uh, the third dimension in that picture was emotion, sentiment, intent. And you know, what is what, what it's very powerful, even language is very powerful. And we said, I showed you that uh, the sentiment was, uh, you know, here, poor woman. Right? The sentiment. That way, I hate this. Or, this is cool. Now, the word cool is hot. Right? Cool is good. How do you know that? This is a very interesting thing. So, we would use such things as urban dictionary. In fact, very interesting thing is that there is a word, that can be a word, that have the same word as different interpretation or uh, connotation in US, UK, and France. So we will even look at whether one of my dear students uh, who graduated in 2009, she is now um, um, a, uh, at IBM Research in Ahmedan, and IBM's advocate in the media and entertainment industry. Uh, I'll give you a very, very interesting example. I am very fond of sharing that. I just shared that with David, uh, uh, our president Hopkins. Uh, this thing that, um, so her name is Mina, and um, uh, she works for IBM, and uh, a uh, big retailer came uh, to IBM, uh, and um, uh, uh, I don't know the name of the retailer, and I don't know the full details of uh, use this as a, uh, and I don't know the proprietary or confidential information about IBM, so I'm just generalizing it and kind of extrapolating it. So.
March, the day before Super Tuesday in Ohio, we saw Centralum and Romney cross over. Romney crossed over and went ahead of Centralum on the day before Super Tuesday. And Romney kicked out the uh, you know, uh, victory here by one or two points, right? You can do this without even poll. So we just had a paper accepted. Again, this is by Venbo and uh, Chenlu uh, Dervot that does analysis of uh, all the uh, GOB primaries and how this system, how well it predicted or helped us predict um, what, uh, this was post analysis, but how we were saying how could we predict here. And now we are trying to do that for the coming election. But these are, this is just everybody tweeting and doing the social media, not registered voters, where the polls where they would call the U.S. if they're registered voters. So the issue is not that easy, and we do actually ask those questions. And the year we go as a whole bunch of details about trying to find all these questions, and there are many, many such questions like that that you identify. So the question you ask is a very legitimate, very important one, and um, uh, there is always a question whether this can replace poll or not. What I can say is that we felt that our analysis was not as good as the best poll, but was better than the average poll uh, uh, when the GOP uh, you know, thing came. Uh, but there are many things like these. Uh, somebody talks about it, uh, is he in that person on ground? Same way, is that person actually a voter? Or, and, and there are other things of that nature. And we, we also try and look at a very uh, difficult challenge in work of saying, is this a voter or is it not? Can we find demographic information uh, that can help us do that? Can we find um, you know, other mention of entities um, that is indicative of voting, and so on and so forth. And it is not just one tweet of that person. So we are not counting necessarily uh, in the ele election analysis. This one is simple, you see. But in the election analysis that we are doing, it's a unique person we are counting. So the person, one person does 10 tweets, another does 100. And it doesn't count more than one point because you have to count only once for that person. So you have to uh, also normalize along that line. So you still see the trending, which is what voters and non-voters are Exactly. You can do the trendings by the issues also. Here, uh, you can say that what are people talking about in the context of budget and economy? And who is having a positive message? Is Romney doing a little better than Obama right now? And see, this keeps on changing here also. And so this system is also, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 will tell you find out what happened in this last week that might have lead to this. It's not conclusive per se, but we can tell you the most often mentioned entities or key phrases in the context of the change in the sentiment for that topic. Ah, that's mouthful, right? And so, so you know, this is very uh, uh, detailed and, and complex, right? But that's the kind of thing that you. All right, let me end at this right now, and let me pass over to uh, Pawan or uh, Ashutosh who have something to say.
you would have, in the first class itself, I mentioned that this class is different. In that, I want you to be participant. Where possible, I have a default project, right? So if you can't think of the project that you want to do based on some of these options that we present or that you bring, that's fine. But you need to be participant in your own process. It's like you, you are working in a company, you know there are three, four things going, going uh, happening and you are charting your own course uh, to position yourself to do the project that is of most interest to you, where you will learn more, where you will get the best career prospect or so on and so forth. Again, use the same thing here. You are going to participate in, the, in deciding the project that you are going to do, rather than us giving you. If you can't do that, I will give you, but that's not the ideal or preferred solution. You can still do that project extremely well and get a grade. That's not an issue. But the issue here is to mimic the real world and you know participate, take charge of your own thing, use your own. Uh, you may you present four different topics. Um, there are many other things out there, and you may say, "Oh, I want to learn this GUI development. This is very you know, because I like the client side programming, you know, and maybe I can learn." Uh, much better JavaScript development. All right, that's fine, you go for that. A JavaScript, uh, the top notch JavaScript programmer is in huge demand in Silicon Valley. And you, you can get paid 80, 90, 100, 200, uh, 120K if you, if you have a very good JavaScript programmer as an example. Uh, uh, so um, you can do that. Or you can say, I want to do server side programming and I can do something else. Or you can just go and talk to them and say, what are the options you have? Let me think about it. But you need to get some thinking about it now. Uh, yeah, I have some little bit more to talk about. So the technology is what we use in this uh, in terms of you you might need to know SQL, you know, working with MySQL and uh, the rest of the things would be uh, whatever Alan and I had thought that means server side programming, either PHP or servlets and uh, JavaScript, Ajax, and jQuery. So these are pretty major things what we have used in here. And uh, the other basic thing is how to use KPIs. The assignment which we have given would uh, give you a basic idea of how you, you might have to use uh, libraries and APIs. So uh, all these would be involved. So, and again, SQL, which I kind of know that a lot of people want to so that is pretty major and there will be a there will be a session even for the project proposal. So where at that point of time, uh, whoever is interested in social media analytics and visualization can just come up and uh, in a group, I think as as he mentioned, two or three of them, where one person from the or probably uh, front end and the other person would uh, take the back end or something to manage both. So, uh, can come and talk to us and then we we'll think whether it's feasible for the network. Whether it's feasible to do that in the, in the span of time, whatever we have and how we can go with it. So you will have to do project proposal as part of the reading of the thing. And you have to write down your commitments, your schedule, your responsibilities. An ideal standalone project will be three person project. I'm open to four person project, I'm open to one person project. Ideal would be three, why? Because someone will do front end, someone will do back end, and someone will do law, other things, testing, and uh, data collection, and many others. Or uh, it may be that you're joining one of these things, and it can be one person just doing something because they already have one project. Any question? Yeah, so this is important that um, another word of advice. You might be doing another other three or four courses. Um, in those courses, you would have final exam. And you don't want this project work to be competing against those final exam. You'll have to get let go on one or the other and uh, get more grades and actually not learn. More than grade, I, I care about learning. So it is very important to front load this course. When you start working on it now and make as fast progress as you can as opposed to back crossing, oh, I'll pick up the last two weeks of the new world.
And software is not something that typically work on the first track. For me, it did not. There are some exceptional people I know in the logistics of ER, Google, for they write software and it works on the first side. Right? Yes. Wonderful, yeah, they are super. But um, I, I, you know, most, most of us don't get yeah, a software for the very first time. Right? And even if it works, it might work for some uh, basic trivial uh, use cases. You may not have a solid boundary case. And I'm, when I go to your courses, I'm particularly known for asking, okay, test on this data. And, and then you may say, oh, I didn't consider this. How are you going to read the last chapter? Last yeah. two. Yeah. Okay. I got a picture. All right.